First reading is from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffered insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight in my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you, to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. The psalm for today is Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. We will read responsibly by half verse. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and had not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless. Nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord. 
that I may go in procession around your altar. Sing aloud a song of thanksgiving. And recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell. And the place where your glory abides. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be. reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this you will keep burning coals on their do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day he raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of Tyre and Sidon, and uh, he's there on purpose, because this is, a, in the modern vernacular term, where he pivots from his ministry of prophecy and healing among the people. Right at this point, he's taken the disciples into this region so that he will be away from the crowds, and what he wants to do is explain to them what he will be as the Messiah. Because from this point on, his trajectory is straight to Jerusalem and the cross. And of course, when he says what he says, they are appalled. And so people have said, and I, I've heard this question, why were they surprised? Why were they surprised when Jesus said, I'm going to the cross. This is the Messiah that I am. And a lot of that has to do with the fact of who Jesus is as the Messiah and who they think the Messiah will be. Uh, before I was a priest, uh, I worked in public relations and marketing, communications and advertising. And we would have interns. And they would ask me, what's, what's the biggest challenge you face in communications? And I would say, trying to understand how people will interpret what you send to them or say to them or put in any form of communication. Because very often, what we say is filtered through a lens, a lens of how they're going to interpret this message. And those filters, those lenses, are, are things like socioeconomic status, and education and generation, uh, experience, um, uh, anticipation of something. But the biggest one, the biggest one is emotion. Pick an emotion. And so when you are reading something or writing something to someone, you have to sometimes anticipate that what they will get out of that communication, hear or read, will not always be what you want. And that is exactly what is happening here today. 
for this whole time, uh, almost three years of, of his ministry, Jesus has fulfilled the prophecies. He has been the prophet. He has used the words of the prophet, all the prophets. It's the reason why they say, well, some think that you are Ezekiel. Some think that you are uh, uh, any of them, uh, Jer Jeremiah. But he's doing more. But he is giving them the picture of what the prophecies say of the Messiah. That he will heal, that he will bring unity, that he will speak God's words. And he has been doing that. And so it confirms in their minds that he is the Messiah, the one sent. Because he's fulfilling the prophecies. But for about 500 years, uh, as the kingdom of Israel has been overtaken and conquered many times, the Romans, the Greeks, the Phoenicians, the Babylonians, what would happen is that God would send a redeemer. A redeemer who would basically bring them back to what they were. King David, the warrior king, who would reunite the kingdom of Israel with Jerusalem once again as its capital. And so, over the course of 500 years, they have been waiting for the warrior Messiah. The warrior Messiah who will kick out those abominable Romans, their, those persecuting Romans, and, and that King Herod, the usurper of the throne, the pretender king. And they will reunite under this Messiah into the kingdom of Israel once more and be God's people. And so they are actively looking for that Messiah. So through Jesus' ministry, they are seeing the signs of the Messiah who will redeem them from oppression. And that is not what Jesus says. He says, this is who I am as the Messiah. This is the redemption that I have been sent by God for. I will die on the cross. And of course, they would be appalled. For three years, they have followed Jesus. The crowds have been mounting because they are hearing and seeing the prophet and the Messiah. And Peter, of course, says to Jesus, no, no, that cannot be true. That cannot be true. Your Messiahship cannot end on a piece of wood on the cross. You cannot be defeated by that. You are the Messiah. And Jesus says, no. Peter is thinking, Jesus is creating a, a PR crisis. And, and of course, Peter is also thinking, as are all the other disciples, oh my God, if he goes to the cross, guilt by association, we too will go to the cross. Oh no, Lord, don't say that. Oh no, Lord, God forbid it, because that is not the Messiah we have been waiting for. And it is at this point that Jesus says, Get behind me, Satan. And I use the Hebrew word, Satan, because here, this is not Satan, as we have come to know Satan, the uh, red guy with the horns and the, and the tail that's a trident and lives in the underworld. Not that devil, but the great Satan. In the book of Job, the great Satan is the accuser, the attorney general of God, sits on the great divine counsel of the Lord. And, and the great Satan is a title, okay? Um, he is an accuser. And what he does in the book of Job is God has been bragging about how wonderful Job is. How faithful Job is. How righteous Job is. And the great Satan says to him, yeah, yeah, he is, but why wouldn't he be? He has everything. 
There is nothing that will challenge his faith. And God says, well, even if he challenged his faith, he would still be righteous. He would still be faithful to me. And they made the bed. And God says to the great Satan, you can test his faith and test him any way you want, but you cannot kill him. And at the end, he will be righteous. And so he sets him forth. And in Hebrew theology, uh, the great Satan represents free will. You see, uh, Hebrew theology believes of the duality of nature and that we are born part good and bad but that God has instilled in us free will. We can be tempted to go to the bad side or the good side. And so Satan's work is to tempt us in our faith and our free will. Now let me say here that uh, Satan has great power, but neither God nor Satan can make us do anything. God will not make us do anything because that would undo God's creation and giving us free will. And certainly, Satan cannot either because if God can't, we can't. So there goes that whole thing about the devil made me do it. <laughs> the devil cannot make us do anything because we have free will. And so the temptation is to tempt people from the will of God, from faithfulness. And very often in Jewish uh, mainstream theology, the reason why we suffer is to tempt our faithfulness to God. And what Jesus is saying here is, you, Satan, are tempting me from the will of what I am doing for the Father. You are tempting me to do what you want what your will is, not God's will. I have come for God's will. Do not tempt me, Satan. Get behind me, for my will cannot be tested. And, and Peter is basically saying, don't be the person that God wants. Be the Messiah we want. That is not God's will. And, and you know, it's really easy for us to criticize Peter and, and go, oh, well, he, he should have known better. Well, no, Jesus never mentioned the cross and all the things that he's done before. And, and, and Peter is basically saying, we thought we were doing God's will. And it's easy for us because after all, for 2,000 years, we've had the luxury of looking back and going, he should have known better. But the truth is, we still have the great Satan. We still do. How often in life do we want God to be the God we want? How often do we want God's will to be our will? How often have we said, love my neighbor, including that Canaanite woman across the street? Ooh, can't possibly mean that. That's not what God meant. How often have we said, feed the poor? Be thankful for the, all the blessings in your life? Well, well, God, I, I earn that money. They should earn theirs too. I don't need to worry about the widows and the orphans. I don't need to worry about all of creation. You gave me dominion over the earth. No. I thought you gave me domination over the earth and all of your creation, not stewardship. I don't want to hear about that. We too stand before the Lord and say, well, God forbid that. God forbid that you should die on the cross for those who are not us. We do it all the time. The not us is our will. And, and let's face it, it's not easy because we really, really want God to be the God that is our vision. We want Jesus 
to come for our version of salvation. And it's a struggle. We've been struggling with it for 2,000 years, and we're still struggling with it because we have free will. Because God gave us free will. We're always tempted to say, you did that. I, I, I can't believe that you said that, Lord, that you want me to do what? You want me to love my neighbor as you love me? No, no, no. Respect the dignity of every person? No, they don't want that. So it's easy to look back at the disciples and say, hmm, they should have known better. No, we're not knowing any better. And over 2,000 years, we have struggled with it. My husband always says to me, he comes up with all these ideas for sermons for me. What he'll do is he'll say, you should preach on that on Sunday. How come you're not preaching on that? He'll catch a portion of my homily as I practice it, and he'll say, that's what you're going to preach on? And I go, yes. And he goes, well, why can't you preach on this? And I will say, because I cannot be the great Satan. And usually that ends the conversation. And what I mean by that is it is very easy for preachers all over the world to uh, basically decide what they want to preach on and then go to scripture and find all the things that justify what they want to preach on. And it's really easy. In fact, I have a program at home who if you put in a topic, will scan all the electronic biblical books and find everything in verses that relates to that. How easy is that? How easy is it to be like Peter and say, you know, that's not the Messiah we want. And so we in the Episcopal Church and, and many denominations have the lectionary. And what I say to my husband all the time is, I have to preach on the lectionary, the lessons for this week. I have to not put my will into the words of scripture. I have to let the words of scripture inform me and inspire me to what God's will is. And that's tough enough when you know what God's will is, and that's a struggle. Every week, when we look at, at the scriptures and the lessons that are assigned, we have to try and discern what is God's will. Because the most horrifying thing, as was said to me in homiletics classes, you stand before God. You stand as Peter. Do not, do not let the Lord say to you when you preach and you prophesy, do not let the Lord say, get behind me, Satan. Amen.
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the Prayers of the people are according to Form 6. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the Right Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and the Right Reverend Thomas E. Bridenhall, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a special place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you with newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be 
thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning and being part of our worship service. And uh, we do have a number of announcements this morning, including the big announcement is that notices and announcements are now at the end of your bulletin. And those include uh, all of the worship services that we have during the week. And uh, on Tuesday, we have the ECW one in, and, and that will be out on the patio. If you would like to get more information, please call Betty Julian and also uh, call the office if you'd like to attend. We are limiting the number who will be in person, but we are adding Zoom with us at lunchtime. So if you'd also like a link to that, uh, please do call the office. And this, right after this service, we will be doing at noon a, an adult forum uh, where they get to quiz me on all kinds of things and have a discussion about today's lessons as well as any other biblical questions. The past couple of weeks, we've been doing that by Facebook Live. Today, we'll be doing it by Zoom so everybody can see each other and they don't have if you would like to join that, there was a link in the announcement that you got for the YouTube link for this service. And therefore, please use that Zoom link. If you need any particular help with that, we'll always be able to help you. And you can use the Holy Tea Rector at Gmail address to email me if you're having any problems. Also, we'd like for you to keep Bishop Tom Frydenthal in your Frydenthal has been in the hospital with a non-COVID-related infection, and he has been in there for almost a week now. And so I do hope that you will keep him and your families in, in, in your prayers. Uh, and so now let us go blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Okay, now give us a wave.